Hey everybody, today we're going to be unboxing the Ender 5. And uh, it's not a new model, it's just the average Ender 5 without any kind of upgrades or any kind of additions to it. But we're going to be unboxing it, assembling it, and then I've got some mods to add to it. So stick around. Alright, we'll get right into opening it up here. I ordered two of these. I've already got one set up and this is the one that I was going to film so I knew what I was talking about on the second run through. <laughs> so they come very well packed in this uh, black foam. And they have a a full color um, starting guide here. It was one of the best ones I've seen. Really clear instructions. So, let's see here. We have the little control screen with the knob. This is the same as what's on the Ender 3. And uh, the, the back is left exposed on these. Uh, you can print covers for them later on if you choose. Another piece here. This has got one of our motors. This is the extruder. And we have an upgrade for this to switch out all this plastic to metal parts. So we'll do that. And here is our Z axis. Mounts like this, and uh, this is where the bed mounts to, and this goes up and down. On the under five, the bed just goes up and down. It doesn't go left and right and all around. It's just it lifts and drops, and the the top hot end does all the movement. So that is the Z. more of this. Here's our bed and these come with the um, flexible magnetic uh, bed cover. Let's see if we can get that one to line up right. Sometimes these things are tricky. We'll do it here in a little bit. Anyways, you want to make sure that this is covering all the the actual bed so you don't get any, you know, uh, PLA spills over the edges if you're utilizing the entire build plate. You can see it's heated. Here's the power. And these are the uh, larger uh, bed leveling knobs. Okay, here is the top. Get it to pull out of there. And it mounts on like so. This is our hot end. And we're going to be upgrading this uh, tubing with some Capricorn uh, Bowden tubing. That would be our first major upgrade. So we are going to move this out of the way and I think there's one more thing in here which would be the support beams for the corners and the base. Well, 
there's also some goodies. I guess there's a lot more left in here. You get a little box of goodies here. It comes with a pair of uh, nippers, some wrenches, some Allen keys, um, zip ties. You need all of this if you're going to do any kind of uh, uh, mods or you need some of it even to do the assembly of the machine. And we have some uh, screws here for the assembly and a certificate from Creality and replacement nozzle some other parts we have our power cord a little spatula this is the um, spool holder and I've got a little trick for how to mount this to save you some space and this is our a uh, little um, SD card uh, slash USB adapter to uh, put the files on and then put the card into the machine so it can read the G files and stuff. So that's what comes in the little goodie box. And then we get um, 200 grams of white 1.75 millimeter PLA. I've got some stuff I've printed on the other machine that I'll show you guys in a bit from this. These are the support beams that go on the corners. They are all identical and they have um, taps here for the bolts to mount the top to. So we'll unwrap those in a second. And then that leaves us with our base. And uh, you can see it's got some printed instructions on there for how to assemble it. Kind of looks like, uh, you know, you've seen those diagrams of exploded, you know, machines. It, it shows all the parts apart. We've got our wiring here. And on the back is our access to install our uh, TL smoothers. So we're going to get into here and I'll show you guys the uh, power supply, the motherboard, the fans, and everything on the inside of this. So to get into the back here, you need uh, one of the Allen wrenches that fit these that came with it. And you uh, just undo the four corners. And the TL smoothers, basically they smooth out any kind of salmon skinning problems or the majority of them that um, you may have without them. So I'm just installing them for um, safety, just you know, to be safe about it because I don't really want there to be an issue and then I have to flip the entire machine over. So I'm going to um, put them in while the machine is uh, disassembled so it's much easier. There's only the base to contend with here. Okay, and then be careful when you lift this out because it is attached with some wires for this fan here and that cools off this entire uh, board here. So you can lay that to the side and then you'll notice that these plugins here for the X, Y, and Z and the, let's see, what is this one, and the E, they're hot glued into place. Uh, it's easy enough to pull them out of there. They do that for an extra precaution. Um, so that it doesn't slip out during shipping or anything. So what you have to do is we're installing these smoothers right here um, in between the Y and X. So 
a good way, I guess, to explain it would be it's just a pass-through. So let's try to pull the X out of here. And then you can get off any of the excess glue so it doesn't end up getting down in your connections. Okay, and then it doesn't matter which way you install these. It's, you know, it doesn't matter. You can put it on, uh, you know, either way. Plug it in there. And then your pass-through cable. Plug it in here. Okay, and then you plug that into the board. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put uh, shrink electrical tubing on both of these TL smoothers that we're going to install. Um, and that, that's just to keep it from shorting out against other metal things um, in here. So it's just a little safer. Um, basically the shrink tubing looks like this. They also come in red and you slip it in here you cut off the excess and then you hit it with a heat gun and it shrinks it down holds it tight and then you can cut the little square holes out for your um, wires to hook into so let me get the heat gun and then we'll get on to that step okay so first we're gonna see what our excess is so we can cut that off first and it doesn't really matter if you get it perfect because all we're doing here is just trying to shield this from shorting out. Now some people say um, that these things generate enough heat to, um, for this to not be a good idea and to each his own but I don't think it gets hot enough to be a real issue to have this uh, rubber around it I think it should be okay um, it just helps me you know uh, have more peace about it about having these in here with a little bit of extra protection around them so once you get it cut off roughly to the shape that you want like I said it doesn't have to be perfect it's just to cover the connections you get your heat gun and turn it on low let it heat up for a moment until it gets nice and hot and then just apply the heat wave it around a little until your shrink wrap begins to shrink down onto it takes a minute or two once it starts doing it it's pretty quick and once it's shrunk down as much as it's going to turn off your heat gun be sure to set it somewhere that it's not going to melt or burn something that end gets pretty hot and then this will also be pretty warm um, not hot enough to burn you you don't want to overheat it or anything but it will be pretty warm to hold um, so now all we got to do is free our um, connection so we just cut those free and that one's ready to install so I'll do the other one and then we'll actually install them okay so I have these wrapped with the uh, rubber shrink tubing and I just do that as a precaution uh, you don't have to do it at all you can mount them in here and put like a sticky back on it and just mount them out of the way and that would work but I just do this just you know I, I just think it's a little safer um, and I don't believe these get hot enough for it to be an issue with cooling. So I went ahead and did it. So how you install these is you remove the X and Y from the board. And then you hook them in. Like that. It doesn't matter how you install them. Then you put the pass-through cables on. And then you need to figure out how you're going to route them. So with my last one I did, I think I put one down here and plugged it in. 
and then put one here and plugged it in. So let's do that. That looks like it's going to work again. So then you put the pass through cable into where these originally were plugged in. And just kind of uh, smash the wires out of your way without crimping or doing anything crazy. And then when you put the lid on, these will be fully installed. So when you put it back on, be sure to not yank on this uh, wire too hard for the fan there. And simply slides back into place and then you install the four corners uh, screws here back in and then uh, your TL smoothers are installed. So now we can go on to installing the corner supports. All right, so they come wrapped in uh, this plastic here pretty tightly. Um, so you have to cut them out. Uh, be a little bit careful when you open this or you'll uh, scratch your paint. So get these things free. Okay, so if you'll notice, one side does not have a hole uh, drilled, and one side does. You want these on the top. So you install these right here in the corners, and there's two bolts that comes from the bottom. So what you want is you want to have the corner you're currently working on hanging off of the edge of a table so that you can work under it. Um, you can install this like also if you work with it like setting on the floor or something and if you tilt this like 90 degrees you can see the bottom and if you have some help you can do it that way too but this is the easiest way to do it by yourself you just do it on a tabletop and then hang one of the corners off the edge um, they use these screws that comes with the kit the black ones with a washer and uh, they go two of them in the bottom on each one on all four corners so when we're done with this step we should have one of these on each of the four corners and then the next step will be the top being put on and then we'll go on to the z-axis and the wiring all right, so we got the four corner posts mounted, and now we're on to our uh, second upgrade, and that's uh, exchanging these plastic parts to all metal parts. And what that's going to do is just give the plastic, uh, give the uh, extruder and stuff a little less give. It's going to last longer. There's no chance of it uh, getting fatigued and snapping over time. So it's just a nice upgrade to have this all metal instead of these plastic parts here. So first we have to take off the plastic parts and then we'll put on the metal parts. So there's a few little screws here that we have to take off. And uh, you might want to watch out a little when you're doing this because it is under spring pressure. So you might want to kind of have one hand holding it together a little bit while you're unscrewing um, the screws out. And the kit that I got um, doesn't have the exact hardware to go back into it so I had to improvise a little bit with some of the screws and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Also, I failed to mention earlier in this video, uh, there is a 115 volt setting and a 230 volt setting on this machine. Uh, if you have 120 volt system in your home, go with the 115. If you have a 240 volt system in your home, go with the 230. Um, because if you have it on the wrong setting, 
and you plug it into your wall and attempt to turn it on, you're going to cause some damage. So that's worth a mention. Um, it's on the back over here. You just uh, run a uh, long, one of these will work if, the, if it's powered down. You run it back there and there's a little switch, you switch it that way. So we got the, the little uh, spring arm off of here. We'll go ahead and get rid of that spring. And uh, this piece here is uh, the piece that does not come with the all metal kit, nor does this one fit into the all metal kit. So I had to improvise uh, and just use a regular screw to hold the spring in place which is perfectly fine because all this screw's function is to hold this little uh, thimble looking piece here uh, and it just holds the spring in place. It's just like a little rod that holds the spring in place. So if it was just a regular screw that would fit, um, it would hold the spring in place just like this would. So now that that's removed, we can get to this one here, get that out takes a smaller Allen if you hear any uh, mechanical whining in the background it's the other Ender 5 uh, it's doing a test print right now take out that corner you kinda have to snap them loose at first because they're in there pretty tight this one is a little uh, different. The head of it is flat and it's a longer one. Well, I thought it was longer. It's not longer at all. It's just got a flat head. Okay, so you get all of that out of there. So now we're down to just the base plate and this gear here that uh, does the extruding for us. So now all we have to do is just put everything back the way it came with the screws that came with this. Um, we could just reuse these screws, I'm sure, but I'm going to use the screws that actually came with the kit just to be safe. So we want to put the same uh, screws back in the same places here. This is a little bit different than this one. Um, it, I mean it's not different but it's easy to forget that there is a washer here um, between the pulley and the screw there's a washer if you don't put that washer in there and you screw this in you're gonna be poking out the back because the washer takes up some space just a uh, little reminder we can go ahead and put this little cup in this hole here that allows it to kind of have a swivel motion so we can go ahead and put this washer on while we're thinking about it and then we'll put that down inside of this little pulley wheel all right so which one it's the long screw that goes into this one just getting a little organized here and now we have to install one of these downward into this to hold the spring so we can screw that in tight This is the one that's a little unorthodox, I guess, um, because it is not this design that um, is on it originally, because this piece right here that I'm screwing in, this uh, screw was a piece of uh, uh, injection molded plastic on the part we took off. But it's basically just a place keeper for the spring so as long as it stays in there tightly and holds the spring in place when it's under pressure that's its only function 
so that's all we're worried about there. So now we can come here and we can uh, drop this into this hole. Screw it in. Okay, and now when we put this on, this requires, let's see, it's the wrong size. It has a bigger, even bigger. Goes up a couple sizes on that one. You really want to get that one uh, pretty tight, and it's uh, it's got a a bearing here, and it allows it to spin. So when it hooks on like this, you can understand how it works. When you pinch this, it allows the PLA plastic to be fed through when it's released. It pinches it so that when this motor turns, it decides how fast that it extrudes the plastic uh, according to your G-code and all that. So this long one goes into this corner hole here. Wrong sized Allen key there. I was like, why is that so easy? This is why it has that inner sleeve because when you tighten that down it still allows it to move so we're gonna put the spring on first and then we'll screw it in it sounds like a better idea after I looked at it for a second So pinch it to where it's under pressure and then guide your screw back in. And these Allen keys are the best because uh, they have these little swivel tips on the ends and that makes it to where you can even do it at a slight angle instead of it needing to be exactly um, 90 degrees and it's really handy for these little small spots so you can see the functionality here that's exactly how it should be there should not be a gap anywhere between this piece and this piece and the action slides perfectly so now we have uh, we actually have a, a piece that's better than this one that comes with our Bowden tubing so I'll go ahead and nab that. This comes with the Capricorn kit and it's got a better uh, locking system on it so that the tubing doesn't slip out. So we put that right in the top here and then we take uh, our wrench that comes with it line it up. Now do not over tighten this. This is brass. Brass is a soft metal and you can strip it out fairly easily. So just snug it until you think that it's plenty tight enough. And then we've uh, replaced all the plastic parts with metal parts. So that's one less thing to worry about breaking down in the future. That's a little bit more security and uh, it you know looks pretty nice as well. So now we're going to go on to the next step and we're going to install the Bowden tubing upgrade onto the hot end. Okay, so for this step, 
I just went ahead and laid the top part of the machine on the countertop here because it's going to be easier to do at a lower level. So um, we're going to install the Capricorn uh, Bowden tubing. And for those of you that don't know what it is, here's the logo, here's the tubing. It's a lot tougher and it's a lot, it lasts a lot longer. And the inside diameter of the tubing is smaller and it has less variance, which means a smoother travel for your uh, filament. So it's a really good upgrade for uh, better looking, more consistent prints. So what you'll need to do first is undo uh, the zip ties that they have uh, from factory uh, with the snips that come in the box. Careful and don't snip into your uh, mesh that houses your wires for the heat. So you just want to free these up. Okay. Once those are free, you can kind of get the wire harness out of the way. And then you take a wrench, this wrench and the big side here. There's a smaller side and a big side. And everything that comes in the kit uh, can fit everything that's on this machine. There shouldn't be anything on here that you don't have a tool for. So that's a really nice feature. Now, something I will say not to be too scatterbrained on you guys but the way this rolls um, it was concerning to me when I opened mine that when it rolls there is catches it goes bump bump you see that and I looked and looked and looked on the internet and the only answer I could get for that was that it has been in the box for so long that these wheels here have kind of deformed just a, a hair and when it's in normal operation it won't be able to be noticed and it won't affect your prints and the more that you use it the more it's going to stop doing that but when you get them out of the box there's like two or three catches, boom, 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 every, every rotation of your wheels here because they all line up um, on the flat spots that they've been shipped in and you can fill the bumps. So don't be worried about that, it's normal. Alright, back to this. So you take the large side and you want to kind of break that free a little. It's in there pretty tight, so. And it's a little wonky working here with it because these wires are so close. But once you get it going, it's pretty simple. Once again, we have a better uh, part for this to go back in that came with the uh, Capricorn Bowden tubing and all of the mods to this uh, build will be in the video description So you can see how far down that the tubing actually needs to go before it reaches the uh, nozzle. So um, when you cut your tubing, uh, the Capricorn tubing, you, you don't want to cut it until the very last step of when you're actually about to plug it into the other end. Because the last thing you want is to come up short. So we're not using this, we'll put it aside for replacement parts. And we can go ahead and install the part that came with the Capricorn tubing and the Capricorn tubing itself. So just like we did just now, 
except we, I guess I could get it started, that would help, except we tighten it. And this part is a little fiddly because of these wires here that tend to get in your way. And I apologize ahead of time if I block any of the camera angles, but you can kind of feel it drop in and then it should thread right in. This has a um, thread sealer on it to keep from any kind of uh, leakage happening because, you know, we're dealing with molten PLA or, uh, you know, ABS or PETG or whatever filament you guys use. It's in its molten state when it reaches the hot end and this hit, heats up and it has the um, risk of leaking if you don't have everything sealed up good here. And then that's just a mess and it's stressful and nobody wants to be in that situation. So once you have it snugged, don't like completely wrench it down, you'll damage something. Then that's installed. So then you take the end of your Capricorn tubing and I always like unravel mine and kind of give it a little bit of a uh, stretch out so it uh, doesn't tend to bounce back as bad and then you insert it and when you uh, push down on this it releases it when you lift back up on it it holds it in place and then you can take this tubing and some of the zip ties that came with your kit and you can zip tie them where you think they need it and I found that it has no problem sticking with the wire harness and all that so um, we can go ahead at this same angle here and actually install another mod um, I just heard about these guys um, the other day and they make mods for um, printers um, such as light bars like LED lighting and it they use it in kind of a, a pretty smart ways where it just kind of it's a plug-and-play kind of thing like you just hook it in and then that's it um, instead of having to you know get extra wiring and solder and all this uh, this is a solder free kind of uh, plug-and-play solution um, they offer lighting for the hot end and lighting for the bar under here uh, I just got the lighting for the hot end so that the light is on whatever the machine is currently doing it's lit really well if I ever needed to uh, record that or do any kind of uh, uh, time lapse that's the word so it comes with uh, instructions here we'll take a look at those Okay, so basically you remove the hot end shroud, you separate the hot end fan wires, align the wires inside of the connector, you measure the correct position, you close the connectors with pliers which makes them splice into the existing um, wires. Uh, you peel and stick your light strip onto the bottom of the hot end, um, you reroute your wiring so that it all fits and then nothing's touching anything hot and then you replace the hot end shroud it's as simple as that so let's see if I can actually do this without having to move the camera around too much we'll get the right allen key I've never done this mod um, these came in after I had already assembled my last Ender 5 so I have to still do that one as well there we go the belt was holding it so you want to be careful when you pop this loose because you don't want to pull anything out so let's see where the wires are that we need to splice into This is 
going to be a little finicky. Those wires right here are the ones that we need to splice into. So you can see a clear view of our hot end. This little clip here has like little bladed connectors in here. And when you put the hot and the negative, or the negative and the positive, in here uh, and clip it down, it taps into that power source. So these lights will turn on whenever your machine turns on because the fan turns on when you turn your machine on. So it, it gets its power the same way the fan does. So let's see if we can run these in there correctly and clip it down and then most of it will be taken care of. Put the red on the red side and the black on the black side. Okay, and once you're confident that that's where it goes, hold it and then find a pair of pliers. Go ahead and slide them in there and apply pressure until the mechanism closes. Okay, and your red should be going through the red side and the black should be going through the black side and then it's now spliced. Now this will get power when the machine is turned on. So now we just have to put all this back. We've got to route our wires here to make sure that the fan still has airflow to the parts it needs to have. make sure that nothing is touching the hot anything that heats up get the shroud screwed back on straight decently straight at least and before you completely torque them down make sure that you're happy with the uh, straightness of it there. Okay, and then we take this part that has the adhesive here and we stick it to the bottom wherever it makes the most sense under here. So let me flip this real quick. Double check to make sure that none of your wires are touching anything hot. And then you can tuck your wires wherever you need to tuck them. Don't be uh, putting too much pressure on this because these are just simple solders. There's nothing to protect that from it just plucking off. But I do want to get this fairly centered. I wonder if I can like pre-bend these so they fit a little easier for me. to line up with my extruder so when I'm ready remove this red piece here so now we kind of tuck our wires in and be sure that we center the LED lights with the uh, hot end there just kind of firmly press down so that it sticks in place and as you can see the wires are neatly tucked underneath 
when we flip it back around, you won't even be able to notice. So that is the lighting and the Bowden tubing mods installed. So now we're going to go on with the build of the machine, make sure all of our belts are tight the way they should be, and uh, tighten anything up that needs to and uh, get on with the build. Okay, on the four corners on the top here, you have a side bolt and a top bolt. So we'll install them on one corner on the video here, and then I'll do the other three off camera. They use the same big black bolts. Um, do not uh, torque these down really tight uh, until all of them are um, guided in their holes because you don't want this thing to be warped. And when you do tighten them down, um, tighten them down in like a crisscross pattern. Don't go in like a square pattern because it's it's like when you're tightening a tire, you want to do it like crisscross. That way you make sure that it's all even. So let's get this top lined up here. There we go. And there's uh, little cutaways that allow these bolts to go all the way down. Flush. Okay, once they're pretty snug, then you go on to the next ones. And then you tighten them down in the little cross pattern. So now once you have your top installed, um, and you have your belts tightened with these up here, um, you undo these little screws and then you can scoot that back or forth to loosen or tighten the belts on all four corners. So once you have those tightened and your tops installed, then you can move on to the Z-axis. And they, it installs uh, with the four corners um, mounted on the inside just like this and then you screw it on with these longer screws here that come with the uh, kit. So I believe they said to get the bottom lined up first and then once that's lined up then you can go through with the rest of them. and Corgi are playing in the background. Yep, got it in there, good. So like everything else, you don't want to torque it all the way down right off the bat, just kind of guide them in there for now, and once you have them, have them all guided in, then you can go back and torque them. Then you can take the short side, or you can get more leverage and have a longer handle and then torque them down some. Okay, so now, now that the Z-axis frame is installed, this motor, as you can see, it, it turns, and when it turns this all thread here, it lifts it or it drops the bed. And that's how we get that axis. And up here, it goes back and forth, Sorry, this is not adjusted here. And that way, and that way. And I notice on this, it also has those same catches I was talking about. And the uh, wheels. But once again, it shouldn't be a problem when it starts doing its thing. But I'm going to run tests, you know, test prints on this and make sure that it's all in working order. So here's our bed and it installs right on top of this lip. 
And here lies the main problem of this machine in that it only supports the bed from one end. So what you get, I'm making it a little drastic here, but this end bounces. And uh, that can potentially be a problem with larger um, prints because it can get a little unstable if it has extra weight on it. But you can print out brackets uh, for that to support it down here. Um, so far with my other Ender 5, I haven't printed anything huge, um, but it hasn't been an issue. But uh, they mount with these screws here and the washers. So let me get those ready to go. So you just line it up with the holes on top here. And then you can get a couple of them started. Those have all been snubbed. Okay, up next we have to install the monitor, a little screen with the knob, and the extruder onto the frame of the uh, printer here. Alright, so it's time to install the extruder here, and uh, our filament will come up through the bottom and then feed into the tubing here. In a minute, we have to trim this tubing to fit into the top of this. So uh, the mounting uh, method here are these little uh, washers, I guess you would call them, or these little uh, nuts that are rectangular and they fit right in these slots. And if you turn them correctly, this plate should uh, fit on that flush. So people differ on how high or low they want to mount these things. I just give it like a decent space from the top. That's really all I do. I don't have any kind of exact measurement. I just looked at the book and it looks about that far away and that's where I mount them and I haven't had any problems. So when those little rectangular nuts are into the slot, you can go ahead and tighten it and then tighten this one and then you can torque it on down to where it is mounted because those will spin on the inside and then grab on the lip so that's on there nice and tight we can see that how it functions there there's nothing loose so that's installed so now while we're here I can scoot the top hot end as far into the opposite corner to see how much tubing we need exactly. And you want to give yourself a little bit of play with it too. That way when it scoots back all the way to the max that you have some slack and then when it stretches out all the way to the far corner you have plenty of room left and nothing is getting cramped and all that. So I'd say we need to cut it right about here and to do that uh, the Capricorn tubing actually comes with its own cutter so you just place it in there and pinch and then you have excess. Now to put this into the extruder, this little blue lip here pushes down and pops back up. It's a much, much better system 
than what comes on them. The ones that come on them, they have like, they're a little like spring loaded almost and they have this little spacer you have to snap into place for it to actually hold. Um, but these are really strong and when you push it down in there you can feel that it's reached its end and then it ain't coming back out. So that's installed. So now we can put a few more zip ties up there higher but we can figure out where to zip tie this to to keep it straight up from this point later on when we're doing the wiring and the zip tying. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the uh, installation of the screen. Okay, so we're going to install the screen here. Um, it's got the same nuts that were on the extruder that fit into this slotted system here. So you have to turn one horizontal and one vertical to match up with what's on the machine. And you want to make sure that you, when you start tightening it, that it is straight or it's going to bug you, you know, or at least it bugs me whenever things are crooked. So let me get this started and then we can tweak it a little, tighten it some. Okay, that's pretty straight. I'm happy with that. Let's get that tightened down. Okay. Now, let's see, what do we have left? We have the wiring and uh, wire management left, so that's what we'll do next. Okay, the power uh, for the screen is here this little like rainbow ribbon cable and I always just plug it into the first one there and then that supplies the screen with the functionalities and everything and uh, now we'll get on with the harness over here um, these are all clearly labeled so it will say nozzle heat and then you can look on here and this will be the heated because it's uh, in uh, insulated wiring so you line up the pegs with the holes and they snap in together And then we got our fun one cables. Let's see, no, these are, yeah, this is. Okay, now this is for the bed. So that goes to this. This whole time you try to wire it in a way that it don't get tangled. If at all possible. So those go to that. And then this goes to this. Just like that. And with these, you want to make sure that you don't get them tangled around stuff because you want to make sure it has enough slack to actually make it as far as the top will take it. So you need to kind of get a sense of what the movement's going to be like and then you can come over here and do your zip tie work. That way it's not pulling on everything, it's just pulling on the top there wherever you zip tie that. So, we need a couple more zip ties for the cables and the tubing up here. 
I'm going to cut all these off so don't worry about the tails hanging down. Okay, now let's see here, I believe on my other one I zip tied something to this, I believe it was this cable harness. So that it couldn't get caught around itself. It's always good to test it to make sure nothing is going to get cramped or caught before you do any uh, zip tying. So I'm leaving that where that's at and then I'm going to zip tie this here. Nice and tight so it can't get in the way of any of this motion back here. All right, snip some of these off. All right, so you can get the idea. I'm trying to make it look as smooth as possible without cramping or causing any problems for the prints. You want this to have plenty of slack so it can reach. And you don't want it to be caught on anything. So I think that's going to work just fine right there. Alright, now this down here, we have some more wiring to do. We have, these are labeled Z and Z. And then we have X and X and we have E for the extruder and we have Y so they're all clearly labeled so the extruder power we'll go ahead and plug it in under here so that's got power okay now we'll plug in the Y so let's plug in the Y's. One goes back here. Make sure they get plugged in all the way. And then the other one goes here. X. So that is here. Okay. here and then all we have left is our Z axis which is up here for the stopper sometimes you have to rip them apart a little so that the cables have somewhere to reach have slack to reach, I mean. Okay, so if you find yourself with a bunch of cables that's coming down on the side here, you can kind of tuck them away in a neat manner, but you need to make sure that there's enough slack for movement, especially with the uh, X and Y axis here. So let's tuck this in under here so that it is out of the way and it doesn't get caught on anything. Tuck it all under here. That just needs, we need to make sure that this has enough room for movement. A 
and these are stationary and this one's stationary so we can pull them down there as well now, I'm not really picky about cable management and this cluster here will be hidden in a moment I'll show you what I was talking about a minute ago about mounting the spool holder uh, they want you to mount it over here on the side and it to feed up like this into the extruder but that takes up like an extra probably four to five inches of desk space um, so I mount my um, spool holders like this so that when it is turning it's actually behind the screen like it doesn't stick out past the screen it's behind it so it's got a smaller footprint just brings them all together makes it less messy get some out of the way over here a little bit okay now we can mount our spool holder and it's got those same nuts on it here so we will get our trusty allen wrench loosen them a bit and the way that this part fits on it kind of unscrews a little and then it has like a little pathway that it pops off it's like a lock nut and you just slide it through let's see which way so it mounts like this so like that or is it like this I think it's like that okay slip these into those slots and then spin it until it's tight and then turn these loosen them a little bit and then turn them vertical mount it high enough to where your spools are not going to drag the ground but it has enough room to rotate and it's quite a short distance from where the filament will be coming off the spool and going into the extruder That's nice and sturdy. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like here. With the filament mounted. Now this is a very, very small spool of filament here. Usually they're going to take up this entire spool and they're going to be larger, but that's plenty enough room for any like one kilogram uh, size spool to fit. So now that everything is plugged in and fits, all we have to do is plug it in and see if everything turns on, see if everything heats up, and uh, start a test print and see how it ends up. Okay, so we're going to turn it on here, and uh, but first we got to remove our little plastic here. and then see if it turns on 
Okay, we got power. Our LED lights are shining down on the build plate. That's really nice. It's a soft glow. It's not harsh. You can't even see the side of it like blinding you or anything. So that's awesome. So now we can see what it does when we auto home it. You can see it shows the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature. It shows the location of all the axes. It says it's ready. We can prepare it, move axis, auto home. So now it's going to auto home. It makes all the axes go to the stoppers. It's raising the bed. Sorry for the lengthy video, guys. I've just been uh, trying to make it thorough. Should have hit the stopper switch there and uh, come to a halt, and then I'll have to level the bed. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys know how I'm leveling the bed here. Um, basically, you move the nozzle with the LCD screen, you go to settings, and then move axis. You move to the four corners and you want it to kind of barely grab the paper as you slide it under the nozzle. So you want to feel a little resistance, nothing that's like catching or anything. So, and then I go to move axis, move Y, 10 millimeters at a time. I can move it up to the other corner. Okay, then I run my piece of paper under it. That's pretty good. It grabs it a little too much, so I can screw the little knob under here until it feels right. Okay. And I'm using regular old computer paper. Okay, that one's too close. Just kind of rub it back and forth until you get the drag that you're looking for. Now, note that when you are touching these knobs under here, it's going to put slight pressure upward on the bed, especially on this design. So, when you're feeling the drag up here, don't feel it while your hand is on it because it'll feel tighter because your hand is pushing upward. Feel the drag while uh, your hand is off of it. Sorry guys, it's a little bit late. Alright, so we're going to move the axis back to the middle. Okay, so in this case it's grabbing way more in the middle than it is on the edges. So what that means is our bed is a little warped, but that's normal. Most of them are not perfectly straight. So what that means is we'll have to loosen our corners a hair to make the center where we want it. Because the center is kind of the most important. That's where all of your um, prints are you know, centered at normally is in the center unless you move it you know in the slicer software you're using so you just repeat the process you go corner to corner to corner if you're really uh, if you're totter in the middle you have to loosen the corners a little to get it where you want it um, until your prints look good and you get a good first layer going and uh, I'll be back with another clip showing it print something Alright guys, so I'm going to level with you. The machine that we built in this video 
uh, ended up having a bad main board so I had to box it back up and it's getting shipped out and replaced so instead the end of this video is going to be my first Ender 5 and how it's doing and showing you guys basically what to normally expect uh, when you assemble one so right now I'm printing off uh, a second attempt um, to a um, wood PLA um, headset stand for my desk and um, you'll notice that the modification uh, the LED modification on the uh, hot end is on the outside here and the wire goes around and under and I did that that way so that uh, the little plastic snap shell would not be in the way of the fan uh, that's cooling down the parts in there so I just put it all on the outside I don't think it looks too bad it kind of gives it this mechanical kind of look but basically there's what it looks like on the desk you have your screen and the bed moves up and down that's the way it should look it should operate after it's assembled and I'm using uh, the um, Simplify 3D slicer here to uh, create the g-code to use it to print so now I'm gonna go to several examples of prints that I've achieved from the Ender 5 and we'll talk shortly about some failures and what to expect. Alright guys, so here's a few of the sample prints that I've got from my first Ender 5 I assembled. And we have um, this dog here that did not print all the way because the uh, G-code was um, corrupt. And I attempted this like two or three times and it came out the same every time. So I switched what I was trying to print to a benchy and that worked out great it came out flawless and then I tried this which is meant to like test the stringing and stuff on your printer and it turned out great as well then I went on to something a little bigger and did this thing this moon city um, all of these files are from Thingiverse except for the dog it came on the card uh, with the machine but uh, this was a really awesome looking print. You can see all those little details. Um, some of the tops of the buildings here are a little gloopy because they were so small. Um, this was set on 0.1 millimeter layer heights. And uh, let's see. It has 20% uh, infill and three outer shells. So. It had an error right here as you can see um, and I had to finish like popping that part off I had to sand it and re-glue it for it to look this good because it was kind of messed up off the printer um, the reason I'm showing you guys this is because you need to kind of expect these kind of errors um, they happen sometimes with what seems like no cause but usually what happens is you're extruder gets caught for a moment or something jars your desk or something happens that causes a little bit of a wobble or a shake and then it messes up a couple layers so that was unfortunate but stuff like that does happen like with this for instance this was the print directly after the moon city this was my first attempt at um, the headphone stand that I'm making right now except this was uh, 0.3 millimeter layer heights and it uh, failed because the um, hot end got clogged and I had to clear it remove the wood PLA and reload it and it's in there doing it again you guys saw the video clip so I'm hoping that that's a success uh, I hope that the wood PLA does not tend to uh, cause clogging so this was the latest print it's a t800 terminator head and uh, it had a few little failure areas here 
this rod here that was supposed to connect here and go up failed on both sides it was so weak and stringy that it just kind of fell off so I cleaned it up the best I could and used a little super glue on some weak spots and got it to look this good um, it's not without its flaws it has a few little artifacts here and there and layer shifting a little tiny bit in some areas but all in all it's a very good print um, but it did have some issues back here uh, this is on 0.3 millimeter layer height and it was quite fast for the size of this thing um, it took I think like eight hours to print eight or ten hours to print I can't remember now but um, so this is kind of the quality uh, you can expect um, from this printer um, printing on 0.3 this is point one. So there's a few samples that I've done so far and I wanted to just share the failures with you guys as well because uh, I wanted you to, you know, expect it. it. It happens. All the 3D printers I've had has these kind of problems here and there that you just kind of have to fix yourself. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope it helped somebody or at least was interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.